All right, I guess we can dive in. Um, welcome to Builders Workshop, create a testimonial block with ACF blocks. I have Liam Gladdy here, um, really excited, senior software engineer with ACF team. Um, we have Sam Munoz, the community manager for um, developer advocacy in monitoring the chat for questions. Um, and actually, let's see, are we recording yet? Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, before we get into etiquette, I wanted to, I told Liam, I, I just wanted to, I think it's great to do kind of a WordPress origin story. And I'm excited to hear Liam's um, today. If you wouldn't mind sharing kind of, I don't know, where you, how you came across WordPress and then maybe even went, transitioned to, into ACF. Yeah, sure. Uh, so my last five minutes have been desperately figuring out how long ago that was and make, realizing I'm very old at this point. Uh, but it was in 2009. Um, I was working for a telecoms company here in Bath in, in the UK. Uh, and we were redesigning the homepage of the website, outsourced to an, uh, another local agency who built it in WordPress. And so I kind of got, got to grips with WordPress there. And then a couple of months later, uh, I got on really well with that agency. And so I applied for a job with them. Uh, claimed I knew WordPress and, and rapidly learned it in the time from my interview to the to the start date and uh, managed managed to get by, and yeah, been been with WordPress ever since really. So 2009 to, to today, um, it's actually funny when uh, when I moved to Delicious Brains a few years ago and started working on ACF. Uh, I saw that my first commit on ACF was actually in 2014 because um, we obviously wow. used it at the agency, uh, and I committed a. a a PR to Elliot to fix a bug uh, and he accepted it. So yeah, I had this one one dot on the on the Git graph of, of commits from 2014 and then obviously many more since then. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, a, it's inspiring to hear. Um, I mean, just a little bit on me. I think I was just around 2007 is where, um, yeah, I, I was researching for an open source alternative for a local college's content management system and WordPress came out as a contender and um, I quickly became an advocate for using it and started using it daily and then went on, yeah, for, I worked in several local agencies and then um, national agencies uh, as a front end developer with WordPress. And then that brings me here to I'm a developer advocate with WP Engine today, <laughs> where I transitioned out of a developer and now, yeah, well, I'm still kind of developer my day to day, I guess, <laughs> experimenting and tinkering. Um, thanks for sharing your story, Liam. Um, work workshop etiquette, be kind to each other. Hopefully, you know, shouldn't have to say that, but just uh, um, be nice to each other in the chat and um, this is being recorded, so if you prefer camera off, um, we'll be posting it, the recording on the WPE Builders YouTube channel. Uh, that'll probably be maybe by the end of the week. Um, I'll try to get to that um, so everybody can uh, see the playback. Yeah, thank you, Sam posted the link there in the chat. Um, uh, just some housekeeping, I wanted to share some ACF events that are upcoming and going on. Um, we have, if you've missed it, uh, have been to any of the ACF chat Fridays, these, those have been going on bi-weekly and they're on Fridays, obviously. Um, and I, sometimes the, the time changes, I think it's con pretty consistent at this point, but, um, and we post the recordings of those on the WPE Builders YouTube channel as well. But it's a great way to interact with the team, uh, find out where things are going, what's coming down the pipeline. And um, it's open to discussion. If anybody has any challenges that they're encountering um, with ACF or projects that they want to share that they're building, it's a great place to do it. And the next one is on the 26th, May 26th. And Sam just dropped the link to that in the chat as well. Thanks. And then the ACF, the first annual survey is currently open. Um, 
fill that out, please, and share all your feedback and input on how you're building with ACF. And uh, that'll be very useful for everyone to just get a baseline of, of, of where we're at in the community with the ACF and how everybody's using it. So um, yeah, let's jump in here. Um, what we'll be covering today is, it was kind of kickstarted from, I think we're, you know, we're trying to address some of the update some of the, the documentation around ACF blocks. And so it stemmed kind of from inspiration of what exists today. And so we thought um, we could rebuild the existing. So this is kind of the heart of the document documentation today is this um, testimonial here, here it is. Um, it, we thought it would be good to, to rebuild this kind of using all the latest and greatest uh, ACF features and even um, some of the block editor features and just how they merge. Um, so that would be a good example. And as I went through kind of creating the testimonial block, you know, I kind of, we started to scaffold on kind of little bits of layers of complexity of using different APIs. So, because there's so many ways to go about building a block in any 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 manner and as we'll see today i think you know it's pretty enlightening there's so many ways to approach it and they're all they're all pretty effective and it's whatever you want to whatever works for you <laughs> and hopefully um that's what you'll get out of this is just seeing the different ways to get at it and so you can kind of take that mental model and next time you are thinking about building an acf block you can say you know we need this bit and this bit and you know, cobble it all together. Um, Liam, I'm talking a lot. Anything you wanted to add to that? But <laughs> no, no, that pretty much sums it up. Um, I got a nice advanced preview of, of Damon's code, so I've, I've seen gone through the the examples we've got today. All seems all seems good to me. Um, and yeah, you're right about that whole layering, right? Because as you kind of get into the block editor, you you start with a very basic block, and then you quickly realize that, well, hey, if I could add on changing colors or you know supporting different versions of this if they want to put the photos to the left or the right and it's kind of the logic that you're going to step through as as you build blocks anyway so uh yeah it's a good demo right yeah so this is kind of um the layers of complexity here on this slide what we'll cover we're going to go through inner blocks block styles and block variations that's kind of the way I approach the, the layers of complexity there. Um, and again, kind of we're using this as our um, kind of baseline testimonial design that we're going for. So I'm gonna jump over to a bare bones local install I have here. Um, and just to, let me bump up this. So yeah, everybody, there we go. Um, all I have installed is ACF Pro, the latest version. Um, and then I'll kind of show you briefly just this create block theme because I, I just used it to spin, spin up quickly a child theme. But that's really it as far as plugins. Um, you know, there's as far as themes, I think we'll actually start. I'm going to activate 2023. So this is as basic as an install as you can get. Um, and so we're going to just create a quick child theme of 2023. And this is where the create block theme kind of comes in. So I'm just going to create that. We'll just call this um, ACF testimonial theme demo. And that should be actually all we need. We can generate that. Nope. Oh, like that. Not theme in it. <laughs> Testimonial. Like a weird restriction, huh? Yeah. That works. There we go. And I'll go ahead and drop that actually into this install here in my themes. Okay. And then the rest we can really probably just do from VS Code here. And hopefully, uh, let me know if the font size is large enough that it's readable, uh, because we'll spend a good deal of time in here. 
But here is this new uh, child theme of 2023. And if you're anybody's looking, this is kind of the previous code, just so we can, <laughs> if I need to grab snippets, I previously built a lot of this in this TT3 child theme, but so we'll go ahead and activate this theme. Great, Audrey says it's legible, good. <laughs> All right. Got any questions as we go along, feel free to drop them in chat. We've, uh, yeah. we've got Ian and Matt here from the team as well, who can, can jump in and answer some things. Yep, I can deactivate that extra plugin, and now we all all we have is ACF Pro activated. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we're just going to add a functions.php to our child theme um, because we're going to want to be able to register our ACF blocks here, um, and. We'll also go ahead and create the blocks directory. That's where we'll store our ACF blocks. Um, and I'm probably gonna be coming in and referencing a lot of this as well, but um, yeah, actually, I'm just gonna start grabbing some of this. So this is the previous theme I had created. I'll just copy this over and we'll place this in our new child theme. And I'm just gonna comment out some of these um, other blocks that we'll slowly get to. Um, so this is just uh, our way of registering um, our ACF blocks and it's right, it's refer referencing the blocks directory. So we'll need to create our first um, block and we'll start with testimonial. I'm just matching the name here. Hey Damon, can I pause you for just a second? Yep. There's a question, why use a theme and not a plugin? And I feel like that's pretty good to answer now. Yeah, it is a great question. Um, it's, it can be done either way. It's really whatever works for you. Uh, in this, you know, example, I'm just using a theme. I can certainly provide, um, you know, I think in the past I've done, some of the workshops I've done is plugins where we're registering ACF blocks. So there are examples. Um, which we can, you know, I can certainly try to link to in the show notes of this recording. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Liam, you got any additional thoughts on just how and when to? Yeah, so it's completely up to you, honestly, and it's going to depend more on your workflow, I think, right? Because uh, probably if you're an agency and you're building, you know, one site for one one customer and the blocks are unique to them, it kind of makes sense that it lives in the theme that you're building anyway, right? Um, if you're if you're building something that's reusable and you intend to use across multiple sites, then it probably makes sense to be a plugin. I think that's kind of the differentiation in my head. But yeah, there's no right way or wrong way here. We're we're kind of just showing that yeah, it's up to you where you where you put this code and it'll work in either place. Yep. Um, I see. Let's see. Sorry. While while we're answering questions, I just saw um, Kartik. Uh, New question, how do you connect VS Code with a WordPress site? Mostly I've done these things. Um, so, well, so I just, I'm just actually, yeah, I'm using local on my computer to run, run an instance of WordPress. And I'm just using the directory here where the themes are installed. So, you know, I, I actually just have a, this is my ACF blocks. This is the site, and then I just drill down the WP content, and I have a quick action to open this up in VS Code. So um, that's kind of what we're working from today. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, all right, so we have our first block directory. I'm just keeping these names generic testimonial example one. And the the heart of registering a custom block is really the block.json file. Um, so this is gives us uh, gives WordPress kind of the and ACF the metadata to know what is going to be available, what kind of attributes, what the title is of our block, um, all that good stuff. So I'm going to again just kind of pop over here from this previous. And this is actually within the existing documentation. 
um, pretty much, I think, just about word for word, except for some of the example text here. Um, but we've given it a name, title, description. Uh, we're referencing a style sheet, which we'll all add in a second here. Um, that should be, that is pointing to the same directory that our block J JSON is stored in. And some keywords, a dash icon. Um, and then this is the ACF entry point. Um, so we can set a preview mode. Uh, it's what, uh, preview, auto, and I forget the third. Thing. Edit, okay. edit, preview, edit, and auto are the three options there. Um, and then we're setting where where our template file is residing. And this is again, local to the block.json, which we'll also create um, in a second. Um, and actually Liam made me aware that the JSX true is no longer needed in ACF blocks version two. Right. Yeah, so if you're using a blog.json, yeah, you don't need the JSX tree. That's the default. I think we left it in the docs just to be explicit about it to help folks transition from blocks v1. But thankfully, you're coming in straight into the new world and don't have to worry about the old ones. So that's good. So I'll create these files that are being referenced from the block.json you now. Uh, Vince, to answer your question in chat about using SAS or anything like that with this. Uh, so long as you have your, you know, your tooling is happy to compile files wherever they exist, um, you, that's fine. So long as it outputs the, the CSS in the same folder, it would just get referenced the same way. Uh, Joey, pros and cons of blocks versus flexible content. Uh, basically, I the way I see it is Flexible content was kind of ACS precursor to blocks, right? And it's it's great in the classic editor. It gives you that kind of similar feeling where you're picking essentially blocks, right? Each layout is kind of a block. Um, so it's it's great for classic editor sites, uh, but blocks is kind of a replacement for it in the Gutenberg world. So you, you kind of create a new block for each thing that was a layout in flexible content. Awesome. So yeah, while he, um, Leon was going over that, I created the remaining files, testimony.css and testimonial.php, which are again being referenced from block.json. Um, and for this first example block, we're going to rely um, on populating our testimonial data from ACF fields. Um, so we should, in theory, we can go ahead and register our fields and I think I already have them created. We can just reuse these, um, but I'll give a preview of what we have here. Um, we have a quote, which is a text area, author, role, uh, and image. And then there's some color options for background and text color. Um, again, this pretty much matches the existing documentation on the ACF site. So, um, and then the heart of this is we can, we want to assign this to our block so we can come down to the location rules for ACF fields and assign it to the testimonial example one that I just, uh, created. And we can save that. And so now it's um, assigned to this block, all those fields. And, um, if I actually want, why don't I go ahead and do that? I'll create the, I create ACF JSON directory within the theme, um, the field data will be saved there as well. So if I save again, then our field data should be, uh, synced here. So that's handy for version control and, and sharing and keeping things in sync with a team. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and just, again, copy this stuff over from my previous uh, prototype. And then we can step through kind of the heart of, of the code here. So ACF does some passes, basically all 
the all of WordPress cores block data down through its API. So um, you know, all this, you know, it, it, this is from the documentation. So we have block content is preview post ID and all this information is available. Um, so you can use it. We're using the anchor, which is the ID that um, an editor can assign, which I can show in a minute. We're passing that down. So in the block editor, um, anybody can assign an ID to each block. And then this is where we're getting all those fields that I just showed that we registered and assigned to this block. Um, we're doing some little logic here to check and make sure if the, the you know, if the editor has provided this information. If not, we can kind of have some smart fallbacks um, and set them up for success here. And then really, this is the kind of the heart of the output logic, um, you know. We're just uh, passing through any styling because we also have the background color uh, fields and text color fields and um, any of our field data. So we'll save that. And then I'll bring over um, the CSS as well. And we can come back to that in a second, but I think it'll be easier at this point to kind of come over and start seeing how these different approaches kind of to building can happen. So we're just going to create a new page here. And just as kind of a baseline, um, I'm actually going to create testimonial just out of WordPress blocks, like kind of nothing to do with ACF. And that'll kind of be one, you know, one means of, of representing the information. It won't be as dynamic, obviously, but it's still a viable option. So uh, we're just going to create this quick, some columns um, side by side. Going to add block quote. I'm just going to add some uh, lower mipsum for now. And let's see, who is it going to be today? Um, we're going to say Natalie Marchant is our quote, singer, songwriter. Um, and we can add an image over here. grab an image and we're going to actually make this just a little larger and that bold and we'll center these up vertically oops what's going on there that's interesting <laughs> It wasn't happening all week. Oh, well, we can just stick without vertically centering, I guess, for now. Um, publish this and just preview it. Make sure it's kind of a one-to-one. -one. Yep. And now we should be able to, that's our kind of baseline. And then now we can insert our new block here and we'll say testimonial. And there's our new block, ACF block that we registered and assigned fields to. And here is um, kind of our baseline experience. So I'm actually going to copy over the quote that we have available here and we can add it. Um, here's our ACF field UI. And I'm just going to match what we had before so we can kind of see all the differences in, in these approaches, how similar they are. Oh, we're going to actually, I'm going to set this because I want this to kind of stylistically match up as close to possible. So we'll say 1.1 on the line height there. Um, yeah, so they're pretty, pretty close. And uh, this is all, this is completely an ACF block. Uh, we have our image and then we can also um, add some background color. And this is pulling from 
uh, well, we can set this to pull from the theme, um, but right now we're just kind of, we just have default color picker colors. Um, so I'll just kind of show, let's see, set some white here. And then here we are on the front end. So that's kind of one approach to using ACF fields, registering ACF fields, assigning them to a custom ACF block, um, and kind of the general editorial flow. Liam, what did I miss there? Um, I'm trying to think. Some. <laughs> no, no, you pretty much pretty much covered it there. I think. Um... I guess, so the main difference, well, I don't think we kind of covered that actually at the start, but the thing about ACF blocks is it lets you build your template in PHP, right? So the way that you're, you know, if you built template parts and themes and that's the, the way of working that you know, then it lets you easily just carry on using that method and we handle all the rendering for you. We let give you all the fields in the block editor. If you want to do complicated things, you know, like select twos or things like that, that are going to change how the template works based on other values that people select, and then all that gets handled for you and you can get dynamic blocks essentially. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. I'm glad you said that. James Johnson just asked, are ECF blocks dynamic blocks? Yes, they are. Yeah, they're, they're kind of, they're most like a dynamic block. They're not technically exactly the same way, um, cause they work through our own template renderer on the front end, but, uh, yeah, essentially that's the best way of thinking of them. Uh, it lets you kind of use server side reactions or you know, validations or all, all the stuff that you're used to from ACF. Cool. Um, Kelly, I, that's a Alfred workflow that I use for the, the lorem ipsum. I'm sorry that, that I feel like that always comes up in my workshops because I use that a lot. Um, I can try to share that uh, maybe in the show notes um all right yeah so that's kind of we have our first block set up and let me actually make sure i save that and we can so just to step through i don't know i guess i don't really need to step through the css too much but you know this is pretty just given us the, the appearance of, so, and we got one breakpoint in here of getting the layout in place and everything. Um, so that's block approach one, example one. Um, let's go proceed. The next version will use inner blocks. And so let's scaffold that out real quick. Actually, I probably it's in the, the we'll save time. I'll just bring this up <laughs> and drop it in here. And then instead of copying all this code over, um, yeah, I got the testimonial example two block in the blocks directory now and uncommented that in the functions.php. So we have that registered and then I can share this is, I think the only, yeah, there is no difference actually in what we're doing here. I just gave it a different title. So when we go to add it through the inserter, we can kind of differentiate it, but this is a demonstration using inner blocks, which is the means of nesting blocks within blocks <laughs> um, that WordPress core offers and ACF. Again, since ACF is smart enough to pass through all that data right down to inner blocks, so um, it makes all those APIs available. Um, and then to step into our PHP template for displaying this, um, again, it's kind of the same, but this is where we kind of start to, and I'm actually going to collapse this in my code editor for a second because it's a pretty large chunk, but I'll, we'll come back to it, um, but this is the the markup, the output that we're going for, and the only difference is here is um, we're just relying on this git block wrapper attributes, which is a core function that passes down a, a WordPress blocks um, attributes and information, and also down to this inner blocks, which is this is actually 
Um, Liam, is this this is unique to ACF, isn't it? I mean, inner blocks is not unique. I mean, that's a WordPress core API, but uh, like how this template logic is this inner blocks um, element something unique to ACF or is this no no it's all completely native to WordPress uh, okay. so things like the the template lock and the allow blocks and the template which you'll see more of in a second all of that is 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 native this is essentially saying hey I've got this ACF block wrapper I want to basically put the the whole block editor inside of this ACF block. Um, yeah, so we have inner blocks, and then this is kind of where I'll go back up to the template where I'm passing a template of inner blocks down, and that's where this comes into play. This is a long string of arrays, <laughs> and these are just all WordPress referencing WordPress core blocks. So we have a columns uh, with nested column within, and a nested quote, and a nested paragraph. And then, you know, there's all a bunch of attribution styling assigned to each of these items. And then here's our second column within nested within the columns with an image. Um, so that's all created. And then we're passing that here as in our inner blocks template. And then um, template lock is, and there's uh, three different options for that, but we're using the all option to basically say, um, I forget the I forget the differences. Maybe Liam, you remember, but you know, all is kind of yeah. It's, it passes. It's saying all the blocks and inner blocks lock them all down, as opposed to you could go through and say you know like in the temp, the inner blocks template above, we could just say certain blocks. You know, maybe we just want this column to be locked only. Um, then we could pass that through and the the attributes here as opposed to just saying all. Um, but we, I think, you know, in this instance of a, our testimonial, we probably want our editors to, to not really move things around um, and just get to the heart of it, add their quote, add the author beyond Wither Day. Uh, Audrey, so yeah, your question about whether, how you generated the uh, that in a block template, Damon, how, how did you generate that? Um, it takes practice. <laughs> There's no, I use no tool. Um, there is documentation, I mean, and I think, let's see, I think I have it open, um, you know, on, on make wordpress.org on using some of this stuff. So can you drop yeah. that link, Damon? Sure. Yes. I already did that, Sam. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, thanks. Got it. Gotcha. Great. I said it because I was looking at the template lock all while, while Damon was talking about it to make sure I could feel any questions on it because I couldn't remember what the options were. But it, essentially, template lock all is, is is just saying nobody can add any new blocks, take any blocks away, move them around, or anything like that. So if you're a, you're an agency and you've got clients and you're worried they're going to you know insert a YouTube video into your header, then you can you can lock them down from doing that, which uh, which wasn't a thing that was possible in the early days of the block editor. I know that was a a big source of pain for agencies. Yeah, yeah, it's really handy. I just dropped the link for, I mean, this is pretty raw GitHub documentation, but it's a good reference point for what's available for template lock. Um, yeah, but I, I this is just kind of uh, after practice of um, writing a few of these, you get used to it. It's a lot of nesting and it can, it, uh, there's always mistakes. <laughs> I'm always trial. It's at, you have to add the block and make sure you wrote it right. Um, it's prone, error prone, definitely. So, um, yep. And then allowed blocks is, we're just saying, which is actually referencing here, we're just saying what blocks are allowed within, but um, I don't even know that that's essentially necessary since we do, we said template lock all. They, I don't believe they'll be able to remove the quote that's added. So um, I don't even know that we necessarily need this. Um, no, probably not. They're, they're kind of two separate ways of doing it. If you want to say um, this is actually useful, if you've got an ACF block that is like a, a wrapper block, let's say, or maybe like it's a, a, a carousel slider right? and you've got the, the top level ACF block, in there, you can specify that the only thing allowed to be put inside of this 
is slides, which is a different ACF block. And so that just setting that allowed block means you don't have to worry about the template, but you can, uh, you can just rely on that every time they hit plus to add a new block, it will only let them pick the things that are supported to go inside of your parent block. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. So you could reference another ACF. I mean, we're, we're within example two, but we could reference one, you know, say only testimonial one block is allowed in here. Not really. A, that's kind of a bad example, but um, yeah, that's another way to, to kind of get at nesting some blocks and locking things down. Um, yeah, so that's, I think we covered everything in there. And I guess the, the, the one thing we should say, Damon, is that there are no ACF fields attached to this block, um, which is a, a, a thing that kind of came about over the last few releases of ACF is that we had folks that wanted to use the PHP templating, but the, you know, there was no need for fields because they just wanted to have the parent container and the inner blocks. So in this case, because we're using a Dubfine template of core blocks, uh, we don't need the fields. Yeah. And I mean, even in theory, again, to go back to your, your point about, you know, referencing for allowed blocks, we could even pass down ACF blocks in here. Um, you know, this could be referencing an ACF block with some custom attributes to be passed down to the final inner blocks. Um, so many ways to go about it. <laughs> um, all right. One we only expect more tutorials from us on that soon. I think we're going to do a uh, an accordion block that has a, a parent block and then a different ACF block for each kind of slide of the accordion. So that'll that'll be a good one. We'll uh, we'll make sure that's tweeted when that goes live. The only other thing um, I'm going to do here is in our child theme, since we're using a full site editing theme, uh, which relies heavily on the theme.json, this was auto, I mean, the theme.json was automatically created when you created a child theme because it's a, a requirement of a child theme for a full site editing theme. But we can open this up and this is just, you know, as basic as it gets, it's just using the version and schema. But I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over from my previous and step through because this is how we can set some styles and settings as well on some of our, um, and actually we don't even need this part. Well, I can come back to that, but so here we're just saying in the styles entry, we can pass down to our blocks. We have example one, and this is really not the best example, but I just gave some outlines so we can see these things being applied um, in the editor as we go along. So I have a different, just like a different border and a different color applied to each block as we go. And then for the WordPress core quote block, um, I'm using the new custom CSS entry to add a like a pseudo element to give that basically the big quote mark, which is, um, let's see. Of this, yeah, it's basically outputting this uh, large quote thing. That's how we're doing that. We're just saying, apply that to all WordPress core quote blocks. And we're using a pseudo element for that. And then passing some baseline padding. And, and this is just some debug. I'll show again later um, as a means to see some debug information if we want to. So yeah, really right now, this isn't doing much, but you'll start to see as we go along. Um, so now we should have our second block readily available. So we should be able to go in and add that. This one again, oh, see there's the orange outline. That's just showing that's example one. And now we can add example two. So I'm just going to type two in the inserter and it shows right up. This is the inner blocks example. And it populates it with the inner blocks template that we passed through. And I'm going to copy the information again so we can compare. Uh, well, Damon's doing this. Gabe, I'll uh, I'll grab your question uh, in chat, which is about 
uh, flexible content and what, you know, why do you need to register blocks? Um, this is a, a more to do with the way the block editor works, right? So if you're happy in the classic editor and yeah, that's fine. You can carry on working there in flexible content. Uh, but the way blocks work is especially in, in a, a, like a full site editing theme, uh, where your header and footer and sidebars and all those things are blocks as well. Um, this lets you register a block that will appear everywhere. So it's essentially saying, uh, can I, yeah, register this ACF block. Let me use it everywhere that it's there. Let me insert multiple of them. Let me drag them around and all, all that stuff that you get from the Gutenberg there, uh, from the block editor, sorry, I should say. Uh, and that's, that's basically the difference. We are planning, uh, to allow you to register these in ACF in the admin screen. Um, you know, we added custom post types and, and taxonomies in 6.1, uh, we're coming in, in the coming months, we're going to look at letting you register blocks. It's a bit more complicated, obviously, because we want to support and encourage the use of block.json. So, you know, we want to make the things you do in the editor save in the way that they are portable and you can drop them in different projects and things like that. So, uh, yeah, expect, expect this to make that easier soon. Uh, but I, I still think the whole, the concept of registering a block is, is still important. I think, does that make sense? Or uh, feel free to ask a follow up question if I missed anything there, Gabe. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'll just keep going. I <laughs> just <laughs> trying to, yeah. Um, so I added this second block, uh, and then yeah, I passed through our templates and really, yeah, these are all just, uh, WordPress core blocks that are nested in the inner blocks. And so we get all the options that come along with them that are enabled or disabled by the theme dot JSON. Um, you know, so we can customize any of this stuff. And then again, you know, we can also go into the theme.json and turn some of this stuff off if we don't want editors messing around with it. Uh, we can see the lock here. Then, you know, that was the, the template lock being applied. So, um, you know, I can't really remove this as an editor. I can't say remove the quote or remove the image. I can just add information to it. And really, I think, yeah, that's inner blocks. Um, uh, so Herb asked the question, why not use a pattern for testimonial example two? And yeah, you're right. You, you absolutely could use a pattern and, and include that. Um, you could also register it as an actual save block type um, and include that if you prefer. Um, there's just inner blocks. In this example, it's obviously you know, relatively limited because we're not putting ACF fields around it. But I think in a blocks, in ACF blocks, works best when you've got some other logic um, and and kind of you know if you want to output a Google Map field, for example, or one of the more more advanced fields, as well as a bunch of inner blocks, right? So the inner blocks is just a way of 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 kind of giving you that control to give the native experience for folks that are just adding text areas or text and and things like that but still letting you uh still letting you use the acf fields where you need to as well yeah so the, all this um you know since this we're just using the columns block nested as an inner block we get the the colors that are coming through from the theme here but you can also do that you can also pull in the colors um or the ACF color picker as well. Um, I think that's using the JavaScript API for ACF, right? Right, Liam? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, um, I, I, to be honest, I would encourage you to use the native things where you can there, you know, like that, the experience and the UI there is obviously a much nicer native experience. And we pass all that, all the data you select from the WordPress default things that supports, you know, typography, uh, padding colors as, as Damon's got on the screen there, all of those are passed through into your block in the blocks, uh, variable. So if you want to manipulate them or you want to 
you know, apply gradient based on two colors or anything like that. It's all just given to you in PHP. So you can do what you want with it in, in the language that you're used to, to building in. Yeah, that's the beauty of pass, the ACF block just passes that all right down. Um, yep, so that is that is inner blocks. That's uh, another variation of how you might, you could do a testimonial um, ACF block. Again, this one isn't using fields, but you could, you know, potentially if you had a, maybe a, a specific quote block or quote field, you could pull that in here and pass it along into the template. Um, or you could, as the example one, used all fields, you know, so there's many ways to do this. Um, let's keep moving along to, I guess, version three. Let me check the time here. Oh, wow. We're <laughs> version we'll, three. Uh, we'll, we'll speed run, speed run the last two. And yeah, uh, yeah we're going to publish the code. Um, yeah. And uh, I assume do a write up as well. Is that how this normally works, Damon? Yeah, I it might warrant a write up actually on the, the builder site or on the ACF site for sure. Um, but I also try to provide a lot of links in the final repo to references as well. But so I'll bring up testimonial three from my previous prototype and let's close these out and uncomment. So that's being registered number three and hop right into the code here. Here's our block JSON. Um, this one is using WordPress's block styles APIs. Um, again, this is another way to get at kind of having different styled uh, testimonials, which I think will be easier once we hop into the editor. But this is kind of the what the difference is. We're saying we have three different styles available. I call them, you know, these are arbitrary, but I call them rounded and shadow. And you'll see that stylistically applied when we get into the editor. Um, so that's the, the only kind of difference in the block.json. And then in our template, there, yeah, there's actually, I'm trying to think, there is zero probably difference here, except or just have a different class, example three. Um, and we're still passing the inner block. So we're using the same inner blocks code as we used in the last block. Sorry about that. And yeah. And then for our CSS, we just have a little additional CSS for each. You know, this is the rounded style. This is the shadow style. Uh, all right. And let me just back out and make sure. Yeah, we'll go ahead and add that third one. So I can just type three because I have three in the name. Add that in there. We will match everything. I'll just leave these actually alone. So save time. Um, so, but the block styles, if we go up to the parent ACF block here, testimonial three, we can see over here in the options, uh, we have rounded and shadow. So, and, and Liam and I were discussing this beforehand because there is a, I think I have something missing in my code because these should be actually updating in the the editor and you passed me that code Liam right uh yeah yeah I did um there's it was just a minor minor change in that when you when you pick a block style it applies a class to the uh to the element uh to the block sorry um and we pass that through to the block as block class name um so it's just a case of, of adding that to your uh to your class output uh, you probably I need a space after example three as well there, Damon. Oh yeah. Yep. So let's see. Do I have oh but I don't have well, I don't have class name being oh no, no. that no, you that should be fine. You're all good okay. there. All right. So let's try here. I'll just do that really quick so we can kind of Verify that that works. Three. Uh, add an image. I'll just leave the rest of the data alone, and then we can just go. 
Yep, there we go. So now when we choose rounded, all we're doing is rounded. I just called that because we're uh, giving a circle to the image. And then for shadow, um, it's just applying kind of a, a box shadow effect. So this is kind of using the block styles. You can have different kind of variations. I, although I hesitate using that word because that's a different API is block variations, <laughs> which was the a number four example. But this is just another way to give kind of a style. This is basically we're just toggling different classes on the parent wrapper. Um, so this is something you would leverage to apply different CSS styles to a block and its inner children, essentially. So we can go back to the default, rounded, shadow. Uh, you can also, if you, in your block.json, add the an example key, it would re render a live preview as you mouse over each of those things. So if you've got users that are like, oh, I want to see what this looks like, you would get a preview live there in that little pop-up that happens as you mouse over. All right. Yeah. So he's saying uh, we could add... Uh, there's a lot more metadata that can be passed through in this block dot JSON, but yeah, you can add. A, there's an example. Entry. Yeah, I think I think if you just I think it's just example. Um, but if you just set that to a, a, an empty hash, that should uh, that should just work. Uh, yeah, example rather than examples. Um, but you can use that to also add like default logic. Um, that that example key is used everywhere. So even if you're adding a new block and you use the block preview view there, then uh, you'd see that there too. Oh yeah, look at that. There we go. Examples. So now when I hover over these <clears throat> different uh, things, it shows kind of an example with the, the CSS applied. My, my CSS might be off a little bit on the specificity for the rounded because that's not coming through, but the shadow one is so. It might be um, because this is actually triggering your media query, right? For the uh, for mobile view. Right. So uh, yeah. maybe the rounded isn't applying to mobile, which is why yeah. it's above and below. Good point. Yep. And I think I won't do example four because <laughs> we're coming close up on time. We can look to answer some questions, I think, at this point. Sounds good. Um, looks like oh i think you already answered joey yeah it looks like some yeah i've got what i could in in text chat while you were talking great um yeah i'm not sure sam has you have you seen anything that stood out that we might have missed I don't think so. I think uh, questions are being answered in the chat. So depending on how long that last testimonial block would take to show, uh, I know we have five minutes until the end, but we can do a little after hours for the replay people too, if you want to, Damon, if you have the time. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do this uh, example four. Um, we could just drag this up here. Close out of this. Uh, this is going to be an example using block variations. And this is the block.json file. And this one is lengthier because this is similar to the block template syntax that we use. That was, oh, you know, because we're passing the actual inner blocks in within this variations key in the block.json. So the difference kind of between um, block styles and block variations is block styles is usually something you want to lean into if you just want to toggle like a class on a on like the block and you know style things differently based on that class a block variation is something like this actual use case that i'm going to show isn't necessarily the best example, but it usually a variation is when you would want to pass attributes down um, that are registered to that block or the children block to alter kind of you know the information um, that and you know how that data is going to be output. 
but it's it's not less of a reliance on you know CSS layout or anything like that, but more of like passing attribute data down. Liam, you might have a better explanation <laughs> if you no, no, I think that that pretty yeah. much pretty much sums it up. So uh, variations is something I've not explored all that much yet. Um because there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of them. Certainly in the ACF world, you can get variations in, in multiple ways, right? Because you could you control what that template is going to output anyway. So there's nothing to stop you doing block variants through an ACF field. So if you put a select in there with with radio buttons even that had three things and as you change that, it would change the template that's output just with PHP logic. So uh, if you're if you're more familiar with that PHP world, then uh, then you can essentially achieve the same thing from your template rather than in a block.json. Yeah, great point. Yeah, you could pass down a class name as well through here, I think, through the attributes. Um, so yeah, we're just saying this was just a bad example. Image, we want the image on the left. Or do we want the image on the right? And so we have two, we're taking this and we're saying, create two different block variations, one on the left and one on the right. And then we're passing some inner blocks. And I set the left as you can pass which one is the default. So I said image on the left as the default. And here's the image on the right. It's just quote first image on the second column. Um, and then as far as the template logic, really, we just removed that giant block template that we're passing down and because we're passing it through a variation and I'll show what that looks like. So this is just since we have different names, we can say, I'll just search for left. So image on the left comes up and boom, there it is. And we can add in our image. And our quote. And then we can say image right. And there's our variant with the right. Again, another version, another way to approach it. <laughs> and it's all the same kind of uh markup i mean yeah you can manipulate the markup obviously in your template files that's the beauty of acf blocks is um you could take this inner block information and alter it however you need it to be um and those are four different ways to get at it so i think i probably will stop there and we can get this code up on github and um I think it, yeah, I think it would be worthy to do a write up um, to accompany some of these blo these blocks and show some of the pros and cons to these approaches based on a based around the testimonial block itself because you know obviously in a different context of whether this was like a slider block or some kind of complex query uh, you know block then it would have different use cases so. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Uh, if you think of any questions after after we've gone that you'd like us to, to cover in the write-up, feel free to drop a tweet to uh, WP Builders or uh, to ACF on Twitter, either of us, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we cover that off. I'm sure as you kind of digest it and start playing around, you'll, you'll think of some more things. Yeah, we covered a lot of ground today. Thanks, Liam. Um, no yeah, you can hit us up on Twitter and hit up uh, ACF on Twitter. We're happy to follow up, <clears throat> clarify anything, and I'll get that code up on GitHub soon and follow up with a recording on YouTube. Awesome. Thanks, Sam, for your to support. Sorry. Join us in, uh, in ACF Chat Fridays if you've got any more questions as well. We can, uh, we can answer some in there as well. Yep. 26th. Thanks for and coming, everyone. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. <laughs>